Hi, everyone. Welcome to our presentation on show race and the red card. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your interest in our presentation. Uh, my name is Jelena Curlin, and together with my colleague Juliet Pedram, we'll be uh, telling you a bit about show race and the red card. Uh, we are uh, the project support officers for show race and the red card, meaning that we, the two of us, are in charge of all the communications surrounding the project. And um, yes, so for the program, switch the slide. Yes, um, we'll tell you a bit about the project first itself. And then in the second part of our presentation, uh, we'll explain a bit more on how you can join Child Race in the Red Card. Um, at the end, we'll have the opportunity for questions. So if you have any question uh, during the presentation, please uh, type them in the chat box and then our colleague will get those to, to us. And then uh, I'd also like to bring your attention that tomorrow at to, uh, 1045 we'll have a roundtable on racism and discrimination and if you are interested in the topic and like to connect with other clubs as well on the topic then we invite you to please join that roundtable tomorrow as well so last year uh, in the pr premier league alone uh, there were reports of racist incidents surrounding professional players each month above that we have seen reports of such incidents in numerous if not every professional football leagues across Europe. For some, when we don't hear about racism, we forget about it. But for many, it affects their day-to-day -day lives. And that is, that is why it is important that we keep speaking out against it. And especially for us, with the potential football has to reach millions. We believe football has a responsibility to be exemplary for two reasons. Because of the values it is said to carry, football is said to be um, universal, inclusive, to promote equality, and to remain one of the rare examples of a meritocratic system. But also because football reaches millions. So that gives that sport an unspoken responsibility to use its voice to make positive changes. Clubs are examples in their communities, and players, even if they don't necessarily sign up for this, are role models. Now, all that being said, how can sports take action? Well, on that point, we have seen an unprecedented year in terms of sport activism. More than ever, athletes have used their platform to speak out against racism, but more importantly, they have done it in numbers and they have often been backed up by their club and even their league. We have all seen the numerous anti-racism campaigns initiated by the leagues, uh, both at national levels, but also in European competitions. Um, and the players, both individually and with their teammates, also took action, speaking out, taking a knee, raising money. You have all heard about uh, Marcus Rashford taking the fight to the UK government by campaigning against child poverty. He is an outstanding example of that new wave of sport activism. Now, coming to show racism, the red card Europe. Our aim with that project is not only to tackle discrimination in football, but rather to use that, that power football has to tackle discrimination through football. Because discrimination exists in stadiums, they exist on football pitches, but before all, they exist in people's mind in and out the stadiums. So at EFDN, we are lucky to work with football clubs, leagues, federations that are able to reach millions. So we want to use that platform. Racism and discriminations are issues we will always campaign for. Now, Currently, we have the great opportunity to receive European fundings um, to run that project. But when that funding ends, we are planning to continue running the project and hopefully together with football clubs from all over Europe. Yeah, so a little bit about the program. Uh, Show Race and the Red Card uh, is a EU funded program, uh, a two year program which launched in 2019. It is based on Show Race in the Red Card UK, um, a leading anti-racism uh, organization in the UK that uh, provides education and awareness racing on the topic. Um, so in order to give a more European reach to this program, um, we started working together with uh, nine partners of the project, being uh, Fundação Benfica, Brentford Community Sport Trust, Chelsea Foundation, Club Bruges Foundation, um, the Dutch Foundation of Show Race and Red Card, uh, Intercampus Ludogorets, uh, Rangers FC uh, Charity Foundation, and Werder Bremen. 
um, by working together with these clubs, we, we use the high profile status of football to help tackle racism and all forms of discrimination in football by using football. So yeah, basically the project consists of two main aspects, that being the Diversity Wins educational program and on the other side, the, the red card campaign. So uh, one aspect being the Diversity Wins program, um, we believe that education is key and here is where we can make the most impact to create a, a, gener a new generation uh, that speaks out when in case of racism and discrimination. Uh, the Diversity Wins Educational Program is an anti-racism and anti-discrimination program for uh, seven to 15 year olds, uh, meaning the program will be implemented both in primary schools and in high schools by our partners. The program is delivered all across Europe and consists of uh, a workbook and a teacher's manual. Uh, and additionally, we've also created school posters uh, to go with it that can be hung in schools. Um, the workbook and teacher's manual consist of five chapters, and I'll go a bit more into uh, those chapters. The first being uh, racism and understanding what racism is and how it affects others. The chapter include exercises and examples that help um, kids and students uh, understand the topic and uh, how they can recognize it and and speak up. Then the second chapter is on differences and similarities. Uh, it focuses on uh, prejudice and how to uh, deconstruct prejudice and, um, and biases. Then for the third chapter, uh, this one's on religion and symbols. Um, it focuses on six of the, the biggest or the most prevalent religions in the, in the world, those being uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Then for the fourth chapter, um, that one focuses on LGBTQ and homophobia, addressing uh, the different sexual orientations, gender identities, or gender expressions, while also addressing uh, topics as, such as homophobia, transphobia, and, and biphobia, and anything um, surrounding uh, queer identity. Then the last chapter uh, focuses on uh, racism and discrimination in sport in particular, where we'll highlight um, incidents of racism and discrimination in football, uh, but also in society, and how we can use sport as a, as a unique tool to, to fight for a, a better society. So those educational workshops are at the core of our project. Our nine current partners are in charge of delivering the program during three 10 week spaces in which they need to reach a minimum of 400 students each. So in total, that's over 10,000 students that will be reached in Bulgaria, England, Scotland, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands and Portugal, and hopefully many more to come. Um, the first delivery phase was meant to start last February as you can imagine, it was highly impacted by the COVID pandemic. So clubs have now started the second delivery phase since last month, and we're seeing very promising results, although sometimes constricted by COVID regulations, but we are not adapted, adapting to um, such regulations. The in-class workshops are accompanied by sport events, both at a national and European level with the Shoraces in the Red Card Festival, uh, that was meant to gather all the partners. Um, that is, of, of course, also uh, impacted by the new uh, sanitary uh, regulations. So we are cu currently considering alternative events to still celebrate those achievements that were made by all our partners with all the sanitary precautions needed. Now, the other side of our project lies in the Red Car campaign. So that's an anti-racism and discrimination awareness campaign with the support of the red card. What we try to do is extend the reach of the message to uh, the Euro European level. So we translated the red card in the 24 EU languages. Um, those red cards are meant to be held by players, both professional and grassroots, but also anyone involved in sports and willing to take a stand against racism and discrimination. Thanks to the widespread visibility of football, we are giving our message the biggest reach. On the one hand, we have professional football clubs allowing us to reach a wide public, both in their community and above. 
And on the other hand, we have the grassroots clubs and the schools that are on the field and using their positions as role models to disseminate the message and have a positive impact on the young generation. All that campaign is um, widely disseminated through uh, our different social media platforms and our partners' social medias. A great example of that was uh, the video we released last, last week, uh, prior to the kickoff of the Europa League game opposing Rangers to Benfica, two of our partners. partners. So in that video, we had players of both teams expressing their commitment to show racism the red card. And using the platform of both clubs, the campaign reached thousands of people all over Europe. So you can find that video with the link we sent on the chat box of that session. Now, yeah, to focus a little bit more on the grassroots clubs. These clubs are very important actors of the campaign. They stand at the crossroad of the red card campaign and the educational program. So by holding the red cards uh, themselves, the grassroots players and coaches are involved in the campaign in the most direct way. They take a stand against racism and discrimination because of course it also affects grassroots football and it is not because it is less visible that we should not care about it. And because such incidents also exist in grassroots football, we have designed educational material specific to the needs of grassroots clubs with on one side a grassroots toolkit that is meant to help coaches prevent and react to discriminatory incident he or she might face. Uh, but also leaflets for kids regarding LGBTQ, racism, religions, and norms and values. For us, the objective is to make that content available to as many football clubs as we can. To that aim, all our materials are freely accessible on our website, and we are always willing and happy to help on delivery when new clubs want to join. So our website, the redcard.eu, is where you will find all these resources, both the red cards in all languages, but also the educational materials. But also very soon, you will have the option to download your own club-branded poster design and club-branded banner design. Um, we will also put you some social media templates uh, for your organization. Yes, so now I guess for the most important part is the ways you can join our campaign. Can you go to the next slide? Yes, thank you. So there's a few different ways that you can join our campaign. Uh, I guess the one, the most simple way to join our campaign is by taking a public stand against racism uh, with our red cards. Um, we can provide you with a set of red cards in the, the 24 languages. Um, we also have additional promotional gadgets available, uh, which one you, that you see in the picture being the, the captain's armbands that uh, can be worn by, by your first team or uh, academy teams. Um, we have already a few clubs that signed up actually. Uh, among those are, are Everton, Nuts County, uh, Ike Athens, Dynamo Zagreb, uh, and the Dutch clubs RKC Waalwijk and Vitesse. So we've sent already a few red cards out to them. Um, the red cards are meant to be helped by, by players, coaches, um, or anyone willing to take a stand against racism. Uh, we will then use those pictures, or if we take videos as well, we will use those to promote on social media um, and encourage others with those pictures to join our campaign to increase the visibility and just get more people talking about uh, racism and, and the effects. Um, you can also select an ambassador within uh, your club to promote the campaign, but I'll tell you a bit more about that later. Another way you can take the, the campaign further, as Julia explained, um, we also have the, the grassroots campaign. And as a, a professional club, of course, you have the platform to reach out to these grassroots clubs and to disseminate the red card campaign with grass, uh, local uh, grassroots clubs in your community. Then another way is, of course, an in-stadium campaign uh, and to disseminate the cards in the stadium with supporters holding the red card prior to kickoff of when the players come on the field. Um, for that, we also have uh, LED pitch site advertising and a banner. But we understand, of course, with um, no supporters that are allowed in the stadium at, at the moment that this is, might be a bit difficult or not the right time. But hopefully when supporters return to the stadium soon, hopefully, um, 
this is an, also an option that we can provide. So, and then there is um, the implementation of the educational program. Um, you can either implement or choose to integrate the program into uh, an, an existing program if you, if you have that going on already. The, as you had mentioned, the, the workbook and the teacher's manual are available on our website. So we invite you to have a look at those and to see if there's anything that you can use in either an existing program or if, it, if the program is something that you wanna carry out for, uh, for your club. Uh, we can also do club branded um, workbooks. If we go to the next slide, you can see uh, examples of the club branded versions that we have. Uh, on the left, you can see the workbook that Chelsea uses. And on the right, you see, um, of course, uh, the workbook from, from Inter. Um, so there's many possibilities. Also, if your language is not yet available, um, we can get in touch and see if we can work together on a translation. Then back to the ambassadors program. Um, it sounds really fancy and time consuming, but I promise you, we will do most of the work for you. Um, the ambassador programs entails basically that instead of having the clubs promoted, um, we now take uh, individuals being either players, a coach or a CSR practitioners within your club um, that promote um, the message as an individual. And so what we basically ask from an ambassador is that we can use their name, picture and a statement um, on racism, homophobia, uh, Islamophobia, or any other form of discrimination, and that we um, yeah, can share that message. So you are professional football clubs. You have the power to make a positive change in society, to convey progressive and inclusive values to take a public stand against racism and support a concrete educational program acting for change, join the team and show racism the red card. If you're interested, if you want more information or you have some questions on something we mentioned, you can contact us at info at the redcard.eu or on both our emails that you can find here, but also on the platform of the conference or through our social media channels on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. We will always be available and happy to, to reply and help you uh, joining show races in the red card. Yeah, so that's it for our presentation. Um, if there's any questions, please, please write them in the chat box and then our colleague will get those to you, or to us, of course. Um, and if there's no questions, uh, the next session will start at 3.30 and then we'll go back to studio more than football. So I guess we'll wait a minute if we get any questions and if not then of course you're free to grab a cup of coffee and have a little break so thank you so much for listening Okay, so we have a question from Patricia Henson. So hi, um, so the program has started last year, but as I mentioned, we had the first delivery phase. So in schools with our partners uh, starting last February. So that was supposed to be a, a 10 week phase from February. Most clubs were not able or just not able to do it or just started, but then in March schools closed all over Europe. So that's when it really started. Um, now we are really starting again since last month with the second delivery phase where all clubs are going into schools. Uh, yeah, so basically it was launched last year and started uh, this year and we could say last month even. Also, if you want to get in touch about uh, the program, you can also send Julia and me uh, a message on the platform and um... 
ask us anything or and on how you can get involved yourself.